Hello and welcome to Infinity. When you first start using a program or now and again you want to kind of refresh things, and in particular now when Infinity version 2 has come out, it may be a good idea to go around and see how you can customize the interface to make your life easier as you go around. So what we're going to do is kind of go through it. There's so many different things you can do. I'll show you what I do for me and we can see what sort of can be done along the way. So the first place to start is the preferences, which is edit preferences here. The general things up here, there's lots of information. The way to find out what you can do is if I go to help and affinity photo help here or F1, it's going to put up on a separate screen. So I'll bring it down here. And then just type in preferences here and down here there's preferences there and this then will give you a lot of the description sometimes they doesn't necessarily describe it particularly usefully but at least it, it has a go and it gives you certainly more than you get otherwise so all this is about those and it can you know there are more things elsewhere but that's what you can generally look for don't worry, I don't bother about changing any of these. The color things I've not changed. Performance. The one thing I do change in here, or have changed in the past, is this one here, hardware acceleration. Because it'll try to use your graphics card if it's you've got one, and it doesn't always work well because it can hang, it can cause strange effects and crashes if it doesn't know how to talk exactly to the particular variant you've got with all the firmware and everything else. So if in doubt, if it, things are crashing and so on, just uncheck that and then it'll go a little bit slower on some things, but it shouldn't crash. With the user interface, then there's various things down here you can kind of play with, but the ones I would most use is up here doing things like the user interface, brightness and so on. And what I will do is I, you, you go to the default, which is like this, but also you can go to the high contrast. And I will generally go to high contrast, contrast because things stand out a little more. What else do we have here? Tools. Again, I leave that. You can, if you have difficulty with vision, you might move this up to large. Shortcuts. I change quite a few things here because I, I use things on the keys, for example. And if in doubt, you want, if you want to start from the beginning, you click reset here and it'll put everything back to the defaults. So we'll start from that. And that's what you, you if you've not changed anything, this is what you'll see. So what we'll start here with is, and I'm just looking at a list of things I've got here to try out. Yes, first of all is export. Um, I export a lot because if you want to output as a JPEG for use on the web or to, you know, show it, give to other people and so on, then it's the export you want. And this is Control Alt Shift S, which is a bit of a pain. So I click here and you just hold on the key. So Alt down, hold down the Alt key and it says there, and then the X, and then you let go. If you want to clear it out altogether, hit the little X over here and do it. But if you if you did say hit Control C on that then it is it's a little triangle there and it says this is actually already allocated to copy so you know if you're trying to duplicate it so we'll put alt x there the other thing i will do is new from clipboard so if i want to take a screen grab like alt print screen and i want to edit that which i'll do sometimes in making videos then i don't want to do Control alt shift n so i can just do alt n and a lot of these keys, the Alt, you can do Alt this and Alt that and so on, which is generally pretty handy. So what else have we got? This photo file here, it means you're in the photo persona and the file. I don't do anything but the photo photo on because that's where I spend most of the time. So what else have I got here? Uh, ah, yeah, photo layer. So the layer menu up here. And in this one here, this the one of these I do see I don't change too much, but it's the ones I use. One I use a lot of is Merge Visible, which is Control Alt Shift E. Because Merge Visible will put a layer on top, 
of just everything that you've got so far into a single layer and it can make calculations quicker to doesn't recalculate underneath and lets you do some other things as well but again i find that you know to do to do that it's sometimes called the claw because your hand turns into a claw but i'll do an alt e for that and again there's no little triangle so that's safe so what else you can do other things for example in here Photo, I have to go back, scroll up to the top to do the next one. Photo select. A useful one in here is to deselect layers. And the reason for that is, is that when a layer is selected here, if I say put in an adjustment, it may well put it as a, a child, but I might want it to go above. Deselect layers takes the selection off that. And so if I go there, I'll just do Alt D. That's okay. Then if I'm out here, and this is selected, if I hit Alt D, you can see that selection disappears. So any new adjustment will go above it because it doesn't know where else to put it. In here as well is, it shows you some new things. It's a good idea to go down and read these because you often go, oh, that's useful. Or what is that? And you then go and find out what it is. So things like here, select next layer and select previous layer, you know, um, those, if you've got a stack down here, you can sort of skip down these, which is also particularly useful when doing macros. What else? Photo view. The grid. I use a grid a lot for things. I'm just going to turn this off for a moment. Because if I go to view grid, which is control single quote, if I click on that, nothing is shown. And it's because it's changed the default. If you zoom right in, right, 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 it's right at the pixel level. I don't particularly want it there. I like to be able to see it. So I control zero to go back out again. So what I want to do is go to view and grid and axis here, where I can now reset that to something useful. So, you know, for typically I'll go to, if I click on basic here, for example, it's got this, but I want to come here and I can show, turn the grid on and off here as well. So go back to my preferences and go to my shortcuts and it was photo view. And it was the grid and axis, that one there. So if I do Alt G, Sorry, wrong one. Alt G. There we go. So now I can quickly get to that grid and access. And, and again, let's just turn it off for the moment. And if I go to uh, view grid and access, you can see they always appear up here anyway, which is really handy. So go back to edit preferences. Back to shortcut. And we just did view. That was the only one doing that. Photo to the window. And one of the things you can do here is at the moment, this here, the, the uh, adjustments used to be in the this here as a default, but it's not, but it's still here. So I click on the adjustment here and I'll put, I can put in say Alt A. There we go, that's available. So that brings this on. So now, if I go to view, sorry, windows in it, an adjustment, there was Alt-A, this appears here. So what I'm going to do with it is it might appear in here or somewhere else. I could drag it into here so it would appear in here, but see, see everything turns into a shortcut there. But what I'll do is I put it there. See the way the, the blue show was where it's going to be? Now I can see all of them because this gives me presets. So I can now go here and loop in any of these. First one's the default, if I wanted to put in levels, but I could then put one with a darken in. And here it is, and it's moved the black level up a bit to darken the picture. So I can just delete that and leave that back there. And I hit Alt-A again. There we go, it disappears. Alt-A comes back again. So now I can quickly snap into my defaults for each of those, the adjustments. Going back again to the preferences and shortcuts and photo window 
and these two things I use a lot of because I have a lot of macros I use these so library is alt l and macro is alt m then there's only one other the shortcut I use and that is if I go back up here and this is down here you can do these bring in any of the tools you want as well which are the ones down here and down to this odd one at the bottom is miscellaneous and that is set the fill to 50% grey which means when you because sometimes you want to set it to black or white which you can do D will set the, the forward and background to black and white just letter D um, it's the same default in Photoshop and then you use X which is it backwards and forwards but if I want just to go to 50% grey which sometimes I do I use alt and what can I to put in there G Ooh. So what's that say? Oh, I set that to grid axis, didn't I? So let's say Alt F. There we go. Alt F to fill and it reminds me to 50% grey. Okie doke, that's that one there. And that's just the plugins, but we're going to go on. So this is taking a little bit of time, but we're doing things that we use quite a lot here. So the next thing to set up um, is something like, if I go to filters here and plugins, then I would like to be able to have in here things like Nick filters. So to get to that, go to Edit Preferences again, and go to Photoshop Plugins. And then I'm going to go here, I'm going to add here. I'm going to go to my C drive, and go to program files it's going to be one of the program files or the program files 8x86 i'll try one of those and it's dxo there it is and nick collection so i'll just leave it on that and say select folder you've got to restart the program for them to appear but what you also want to do because is to, down here it says allow unknown plugins to be used you need to check that one as well then close that and it says there we go restart required Change some preferences. Would you like to restart now? So I'll say yes. And you want to save that one? No, I don't save that one. And there we go. And here, if it's restarting, that's underneath. I've actually got the previous version there. And here I am ready. And I go to recent photographs. I'll pick in up that one. Don't want a recovery file. And here it is. There we go. Right, and so now if I go to filters, plugins, Nick collection, and here's all of the Nick filters, because remember to say let, let, allow those extras in as well. What else? The, yeah, the panels here. So these panels here are the ones from window here. So we did the adjustment one in this one in here, which goes Alt A, which brings out that one, and again, turn it off again like that. But there are ones which they've, they've changed things around from version one. So channels up here is the same level as, as layers. And I want to be able to see both at once. So I'm going to pull the channels back down here to the bottom one. I'll just put it over to the left there because history I use a lot. Of course, is on the right there. Transform I actually don't use too much. So I'm actually going to, if you drag it out somewhere and they hit the X, then it kind of disappears like that. You can also very here if you can get the edge there we go you can move this up and down to how you want it to be and also with this if you wanted to collapse this down at any time just double click one of these and there it's popped to the bottom it's still here click once and it pops back up again which is a kind of handy tip in there what else well up here another one i use that's quite useful is window metadata and this you can see here it tells me what camera i use for this picture and I just stick that one up the top there. And here, so I've got histogram, colour and metadata. That's fine, that's useful. And brushes, brushes was up here. You can leave this here if you want to. So layers, brushes and stock. I, I think I'll leave that one there. The thing you can do here is, is a bit of a pain. Is, is go to view and we showed that just now where we go to the grid and axis, which we set to Alt G. But what's useful to put in here is I'm going to turn on, show the grid, but it doesn't see it because it's at the pixel level. So that's a bit of a, a thing. 
But what I can do here, if I go to something like basic, oh, here's something, you could leave it at that, but I'm going to want to have something a bit more than that. So I'm going to, going to this one change the brightness. I think the brightness is probably okay around about here. So yeah, it'll be about right. But I change the subspacing here. So I'm going to put this up to, and then the division here, I'm going to put that to five lines, because this gives this, me these subdivision ones. But you can't see this moment because the subdivision lines one here is down at zero. So I turn that up. And now you can see them. And this now looks more like, and this is turned all the way up, more like the grid you get on the original. And now I want to save this. So what I want is up here as a preset. So I go click up here, say create preset. And call it Dave's Basic. That'll do. And you can put into categories, you can create categories as well, which I just won't bother with for the moment. So now when I want something, it's, here it is, it's Dave's Basic, and I can click on this here and it'll just, I can find what that one is. And it can set the grid up, may need to do it once when I'm doing with a new picture. And uh, then I can again turn the grid off and view, show grid, turn that off or control single quote. So now I've got a grid which I can use which I would use just to show you what it was. Control, single quote, they were turn it on. I use this for things like when I'm doing the perspective tool. And if I want to adjust things, I want to make this wall here a little bit more level. I'll pull this down here. Oh, I need to be, I'll make sure I'm on the right level. It won't work unless you've got a image layer selected. And now I can pull this down here like that to make that level wall there so you can use do that kind of thing and that is how I will use the grid and say apply that and then view and show grid off or control single quote you can also do view customized toolbar which is the one at the top here you can drag things up and down drag things off and so on and you can do view customized tools which is the for the ones down here. So I can say close that there, which turns that one off. And what you can also do is if you do things quite often, you can record macros. And I won't do that one here because it'll take another 10, 15 minutes. So we've done about 20 minutes. Or so that's probably about enough for now. So I can take things I don't want here. And that is the whole system now set up so I'm going to be able to use it as quickly as possible. Remember I was making notes as I went along and so I'll put on a post-it note and help me remember and before long I'll be working much quicker. Anyway that's it and thank you very much for watching.